Hi everyone, and welcome to the Knights of Online Marketers Digital Classroom. We are now going to officially start the first session of your integrated, comprehensive, virtual assistant and digital marketing training program with what we call the PTA or the Pre-Training Assessment. So kung baga, bago tayo magsimula with our training proper, kailangan muna natin magkaroon ng tamang mindset, magkaroon ng mga insights kung paano ba talaga dapat magsimulang mag-build ng ating digital career para maging isang virtual professional tayo. Particularly, ang pagiging isang virtual assistant or ang pagiging isang digital marketer. So that's why the first session of your 20 days will start again with a pre-training assessment. So kung baga, hindi pa ito talaga ang training proper niyo. Kailangan kasi talaga natin munang malaman kung paano ba dapat tayo magsimula. So that's why for, for this session, I am going to give you first a general orientation about Knights of Online Marketers and of course with the program that you enrolled sa amin. Ngayon ko rin sasabihin sa inyo kung ano ba yung mga kailangan yung i-comply, ano-ano ba yung mga kailangan ninyong i-submit in order for you to receive your certificate of training completion. But before I am going to give you those orientation and um, mind-setting insights, kailangan ko munang magpakilala, of course, para maging comfortable kayo sa akin. Since ako yung makakasama ninyo through this video for the next 20 days. So palagi nyo akong mapapanood Palagi nyo rin maririnig yung boses ko sa loob ng 80 hours in all or for a total of 4 weeks. Kaya para mas maging comfortable kayo sa akin, I am going to introduce first myself. So I hope na you are all ready in order for you to learn more about the, the many benefits of being a virtual professional. Some of you, I'm sure, nakilala na rin ako because you participated with our um, free learning sessions, particularly yung virtual assistant orientation program or yung digital marketing orientation program. Baka nakapag-join na kayo with our other programs then. But for the benefit of everyone, especially na yung ngayon lang um, nakapag-enroll sa mga programs ng KOM. So, magpapakilala na lang ako sa inyo ulit. My name is Ronald Rambuanga. But, you can call me Piper instead. So, mas preferred kung tawagin na lang ninyo akong Miss Piper, Ma'am Piper, or pwede rin namang Piper na lang diretsyo. Matagal na kasing namatay yung Ronald na yan nung ipinanganak si Piper. I am the founder and um, owner of Knights of Online Marketers or mas kilala nga siya sa tawag na KOM. KOM, the Knights of Online Marketers already celebrated its seventh founding year because it was November 11 of 2013 when I started to create an outsourcing team dito sa bahay namin sa barangay Pagogaliera in the city of Davao. Pero it was July 1, it was July 1 of 2014 when I registered the business, kaya naging legitimate homegrown business process outsourcing company kami. So we are registered as a BPO company. 
ito na lang pag-renew namin ng business permit noong 2015, dinagdag namin sa aming business registration yung mga training programs na ino-offer namin sa mga Filipinos. Kaya kasama sa aming business registration ang, ang virtual assistant training services namin. For the past seven years of doing business, ang KOM nag offer kami ng apat na major services. So meron kaming four major services at isa dito sa apat na to nag-avail kayo. So ano-ano ba yung mga major services na meron kami? Of course, first on the list is yung aming outsourcing. So meron kaming mga outsourcing services. So meaning to say, meron kaming mga clients both from the local market or based in the Philippines as well as mga foreign or international market. Pero majority na meron kami, mga foreign clients talaga. Pero because um, obviously, we want to earn more sa services na ino-offer namin. Kaya mas preferred namin mag-cater ng mga foreign clients. But three years ago, when I realized na bakit business ng mga foreigners ang palagi lang namin ina-assist or palagi namin tinutulungan para i-build ang kanilang business online. Sabi ko sa sarili ko, paano naman yung mga local entrepreneurs or those businesses that are based here in the Philippines? Kaya nagkaroon ako ng advocacy-based mission of helping also the local micro-small and medium entrepreneurs here in the Philippines. Yung pinakaunang major service ng KOM is outsourcing. So meron kami mga clients at meron kami group of virtual professionals. We are going to match the client's requirements and the skills of our virtual professionals. Tapos mag-work sila under nights of online marketers. So, meaning to say, meron kaming mga agents na nagtratrabaho under our company. Pero since marami na rin akong mga na-train na mga Filipinos since 2014, yung iba na, yung ibang clients na naghahanap sa amin ng mga virtual assistants, ng mga graphic designers, ng mga web developers, nire-refer ko na lang yung opportunity na opportunity na yon sa aming mga graduates. Kasi hindi namin makater yung ibang mga clients because ang pinaka bread and butter talaga ng KOM is yung second service namin. And that is by doing training. Kaya nung 2015 hanggang 2020, nag-focus talaga kami for talent development. Kasi meron din akong sabihin na lang natin experience way back 2014. Siyempre, um, first time entrepreneur ako, kaya hindi ko pa alam masyado kung paano i-manage ang team. So, ang naranasan ko kasi before, 2014, when I started the outsourcing business, medyo mahirap mag-manage ng tao. At saka, Um, napakalaki ng responsibilities ko as the employer to my employees. Samantalang, if we are just going to do some training, after the training program, kung nakagraduate na yung aming mga trainees, hindi na masyado mabigat yung responsibilities namin. Kasi hindi naman kami nag-guarantee in the first place na yung mga trainees namin is sure na sure na bibigyan namin ng clients after. Because we are not a train and hire service provider. Ang um, talagang pinoprovide namin, training programs lang talaga. Kung baga, investment in your intellectual capital as a virtual professional. Pero, part of the training program that we are offering 
to our trainees is to help them tulungan namin sila kung paano ba sila maka-acquire ng clients after the training program. So that's part of your learning session. The third major service na meron kami is yung co-working environment namin. Kasi way back 2015, nung nagkaroon ako ng opisina in the heart of Davao City, kung baga naging accessible siya sa north and south part of Davao, kaya kung merong mga problems with kuryente, problems with connectivity, sa mga bahay ng mga freelancers, they can always visit our place, use our facilities, but of course, they are going to pay a particular amount of money because that is how a co-working space um, works. Kaya yan yung aming third major service. Yun nga lang, when this global pandemic started, medyo hindi na ganun ka-functional ang aming co-working space. Mas nagdagami pa lang siya for meetings, ganun, for mga conferences or mga mga workshops. Bali may mga ano ba, may mga group of people na rerentahan yung aming training room para mag-conduct doon ng seminar, ng meeting. So hindi na siya more of the individual use. And of course, yung ikaapat namin na major service is yung digital marketing. And because we are offering digital marketing, we became an industrial and developmental partner of the Department of Trade and Industry, or DPI, in terms of helping businesses build their brand in the digital landscape. So kaya kinuha ako, in-outsource ako ng DPI to be specific ng DPI Region 11 and of course yung DPI Bukidnon Provincial Office as their digital marketing consultant as well as their digital marketing trainer. So that's why I'm very blessed na naging partner kami ng mga government agencies kagaya ng DPI. We are also a partner of the Department of Information and Communications Technology or DICT. In fact, I am one of their trainer sa kanilang program na Digital Jobs PH Technical Training. Industrial partner din kami ng DOLE the Department of Labor and Employment, developmental partner din kami ng DAR or the Department of Agrarian Reform at yung kasisimula lang ng partnership namin, yung Department of Social Welfare and Development or yung DSWD, particularly sa Region 10. na amaze na ako eh, kasi even DAR, the DOLE, the DSWD, Meron pala silang mag, mga ganitong programs sa kanilang mga beneficiaries. So that's why it's our pride na we are working with government offices through digital marketing. Of course, partner din kami ng mga private institutions at saka mga NGO or non-government organizations. Pero... Nung nagsimula ang community quarantine ng March of 2020, naisipan kong uh, ibalik yung aming outsourcing services. Kasi hindi kami masyado nakakakandak na ng face-to-face -face training. It's because of some health measures na kailangan namin i-observe. So kaya ang ginawa namin... We converted all our training programs into a digital learning session kagaya ng ginagawa natin ngayon. I am actually a registered nurse by education and by profession. Bago ako naging isang virtual assistant, nagtrabaho muna ako as a registered nurse 
sa isang private hospital dito sa Davao City. So from 2005 hanggang 2011, for six years, I worked and practiced my profession as a registered nurse. Na-assign ako noon sa, ano, sa operating room. And then after four years, um, nilipat naman ako sa female medical and surgical ward. Yun nga lang, after two years of working as a healthcare practitioner dito sa Philippines, na-realize ko na masyado talaga kami underpaid. Six years na kasi ang nakalipas. And napansin ko na parang walang professional growth and development na nangyari sa karir ko as a nurse. Kasi yung sweldo ko noong 2005, yun pa rin ang naging sweldo ko noong 2010. Nadadagdagan lang yun kapag merong mga overtime or holiday pay. Pero kaya na-realize ko, sabi ko, parang, parang walang may nangyari for the past five years. Kaya I decided to also go abroad. Alam niyo naman yung mga nurses, ba? Diba? Uh, plano talaga nila yung pumunta abroad. Plano ko rin naman talagang pumunta ng abroad way back 2011. I actually started processing already my application sa isang agency para makapag-study um, and work ako sa Australia. Yun nga lang, while I am processing my application, I discovered an opportunity na pwede pala akong kumita ng dollars even I am just here in the Philippines. And that is by working as a virtual assistant. Kaya biglang nag-change yung mindset ko. Sabi ko sa sarili ko, bakit pa ako mag-a-abroad if I can earn US dollars even I am here in the Philippines. So kaya it was January of 2011 when I discovered about this kind of opportunity. So nag-apply ako sa isang opisina, isa-isang BPO company here in Davao para mag-apply as a virtual assistant. To be honest with you, hindi ko talaga sinubukang mag-apply sa call center. It's because I am not confident, I am not confident with my English communication skills. Hindi ako confident sa ating ano, um, English communication. Kaya natatakot talaga ako noon na mag-work as a call center agent. Kaya naghanap ako ng opportunities na non-voice non-voice, yung hindi kailangan salita. Nang salita, kumbaga, nasa back office lang kami. So, yun ang naisipan ko, yung pagiging isang virtual assistant. So, that's why um, January, I applied pagdating ng March of 2011, to be specific, March 16 of 2011, when I started my first day as a virtual assistant, sa isang um, BPO company dito sa Davao City. Wala akong background noon. Kasi nga, galing ako sa hospital, di ba? Ang baon-baon ko lang is yung interest of learning, knowledge, and skills, competencies kung paano ako mag-survive as a VA noon. Kagandahan lang din kasi nung experience ko, nagsimula ako sa office. Kumbaga sa loob ng opisina, para ko siyang naging training ground para malaman yung kung paano maging isang successful VA. March 16 of 2011. Fast forward, this coming March um, 16 of 2020, I am going to celebrate my 10th year anniversary in the industry. So, magsasampung taon na ako. Kaya nga, every time na kinikwento ko yung aking journey, medyo talaga nostalgic talaga siya. Every time na iniisip ko kung paano talaga ako nagsimula. 
one year and four months akong nagstay sa loob ng company na lo, sa company na yon. Marami akong natutunan. I am always hungry to learn. Gusto ko talagang um, tumaas ang level ng aking knowledge and skills competencies. That's why I keep on studying and practicing the task na binibigay sa akin ng mga clients ko way back um, when I am still working as an office-based virtual assistant. After one year and four months, na-assess ko or na-evaluate ko na parang kaya ko nang tumayo sa sarili kong mga paa. Kaya it was July of 2012, after one year and four months, when I decided to to shift from office base into home base. So from office, gusto ko nang magtrabaho sa bahay namin. Yun nga lang, if I am going to work at home, meron akong dalawang problema na na-encounter. The first problem, wala akong sariling computer at saka wala akong internet noon. Kaya alam nyo ba, na sa loob ng dalawang buwan, nagtrabaho muna ako sa isang internet cafe. Tapos yung sweldo na nareceive ko sa aking clients, iniipon ko yon para makabili ako ng laptop na gagamitin ko to deliver my services as a virtual assistant. So problem solved. Wala akong internet, wala akong computer. The solution, internet cafe. Pangalawang problem, sino ang magiging client ko the moment I will start working as a home-based VA? Kanino ako magtratrabaho? Kaya pinag-aralan ko kung paano mag-acquire ng clients. Siyempre, kailangan kong mag-client hunting. Paano o saan ko ba yan sila makikita? Good news na that's part of your training program. I am also going to share to you kung saan ba tayo pwedeng makahanap ng mga clients at kung ano yung kailangan natin gawin in order for us to acquire more clients. Kasama yan sa training program niyo on the next coming uh, modules natin. So, nagkaroon naman ako ng client noong 2012. I got my first client, my second client, my third, my fourth, my fifth, hanggang nagkaroon ako ng six clients in all. Nung nagkaroon ako ng six clients, ang daming perang pumapasok talaga sa bank account ko. Pero ang kapalit nun, nagkaroon naman ako ng problem with my health. Kasi halos wala na rin akong tulog wala na rin ako masyado or hindi na ako kumakain sa tamang oras <laughs> to the point na minsan wala na rin tayong proper hygiene eh kasi nasa loob na lang tayo ng bahay eh kung baga naging swapang ako sa pera noon kasi nga an na clients and all of them are full time ilang oras ba ang full time di ba 8 hours oh so 8 16 24. So, dapat tatlong clients lang or tatlong clients pa lang 24 hours na. E, 24 hours lang in one day. But I got three more clients. Ibig sabihin, nagtratrabaho ako ng sobra sa isang araw just to cater the six clients na meron ako. Kaya, anong expectations natin? Siyempre, magkakaroon talaga tayo ng ano, ng problems with our health. I was admitted in the hospital. Three days akong na-admit with series of laboratory and diagnostic test. Pero alam nyo ba, nung na-discharge na ako, ang final diagnosis sa akin ng doktor, over fatigue lang. Nasobrahan lang daw ako sa pagtratrabaho. That's why I need to have some rest. Kaya pag uwi ko ng bahay, it was November of 2013, na-realize ko na kung hindi kaya ng iisang fighter, why not I will multiply myself? Why not I will duplicate my strength by training other people 
para maging agents ko. So doon ako nagkaroon ng idea na I will train out of school youth kung ano yung ginagawa ko para kapag maging skilled na sila, pwede na nilang um, gawin yung mga task na binibigay ng mga clients ko. Ang tawag doon, subcontracting. Kasi, bakit subcontracting? It's because, pangalan ko pa rin naman yung, um, or ako, ako pa rin yung pagkakaalam ng client na nagtratrabaho. Pero hindi alam ng client that I am delegating the task already to someone. Actually, hindi naman yan bawal. Hindi yan bawal. At saka hindi siya masama. As long as you can really deliver quality services. Walang problema yun sa client. Basta ang importante, maibigay mo sa akin ang expectations ko. Parang ganyan. So I'm doing subcontracting before. So I got um, I got my first agent, my second agent. Kaya nag-create na ako ng Knights of Online Marketers noong November 11 of 2013. So and from there, uh, nag-expand at nag-grow naman yung aming operations. So that's why... Um, the reason why kung bakit ko siya ishinear sa inyo, kung bakit ko shinear sa inyo yung aking um, experience, it's because I am also encouraging you na in the future, kung sa tingin ninyo meron kayong kakayahan, meron kayong leadership skill, then why not also create your outsourcing team? Or kung hindi naman kayo ano, mahilig mag-manage ng tao, or sabihin na lang natin, introvert ka, yung parang gusto mo, ikaw lang lagi mag-isa. Kailangan mong pag-aralan kung paano mag-ask ng tinatawag natin retainer speed. Ganito kasi yan. Um, ang pagkakaalam kasi natin, majority of us, no, especially those who are newcomers in the industry or yung nagsisimula pa lang maging isang virtual professional, ang pagkakaalam natin, ang mga virtual assistants, binabayaran sila per hour. ba? Binabayaran tayo per hour. And usually, in the Philippines, in the Philippines, ang pinaka ano talaga, sabihin na lang natin um, kumbaga ang pinaka mura or ang pinaka standard na hourly rate ng isang baguhan sa industry usually it will start with 3 US dollars per hour. Actually medyo malaki na yan kung i-convert natin dito peso. As much as possible we are encouraging you na wag tayong bababa sa 3 US dollars per hour as much as possible. Meaning, kung kaya natin i-convince si client na yan ang hourly rate natin, much better. Pero alam nyo, kung sakaling sasabihin ng client na, Piper, can you start with 2 US dollars per hour, it's your decision. Tatanggapin mo ba or hindi? Pero para sa akin, wala namang masama kung tatanggapin mo yon. Unlike sa sinasabi ng ibang mga seasoned freelancers. Kasi di ba marami tayong mga um, communities or Facebook groups para sa mga virtual assistants, no? Tapos meron tayong nababasa doon sa community na yon na dapat daw hindi bababa ng 3 US dollars kasi naaapektuhan daw ang buong VA community if if a lot of Filipinos will ask lower than 3 dollars. For me naman, for me, on my independent insights, parang hindi naman talaga siya ganun na ganong effect ang binibigay niya eh. Kasi ang, ang pinaka-common example dito, kapag nagre-rate daw kayo ng lower than $3, for example, $2 per hour, kunyari in-interview ka, 
Tapos in-interview ako ni client. Tapos nung tinanong ako ng client, Piper, how much is your hourly rate? Tapos nung sinabi kong, my rate is $4 per hour. Ah, okay. I just interviewed earlier another Filipino VA, but he is actually offering me with 2 US dollars only. Usually, ganun yung nasa ano, isip natin. Kung baga, hindi na raw nila kukunin yung mga nasa 4 or 5 dollars kasi meron namang nag-rate ng 2 dollars. For me, hindi eh. Kasi kung ako yung client, no, nung sinabihan, kung ako yung client, tapos meron akong interview at sabi niya, my rate is 5 US dollars, hindi ko man sasabihin sa kanya, bakit mahal ka? I am going to verify. Bakit 5 dollars per hour ang rate mo? Ano-ano na ba yung mga skills na pwede mong i-offer sa akin? Anong level na ba? Or nasaan ka na ba sa hierarchy? Kasi kung talagang magaling ka, you can always convince the client to avail your services kahit pag 5 dollars ka. Kaya huwag kayo masyadong matakot or ma-pressure kung tatanggap kayo ng clients na below 3 US dollars per hour. Okay? I started with 1.5 US dollars before. Pero syempre ngayon hindi na. Kasi 10 years na yung nakalipas. Going back to what I mentioned earlier, kung wala kang leadership skill, no? kung wala kang leadership skill, or you are introvert, mas gusto mong ikaw lang, as you grow in this industry, dapat mapag-aralan mo kung paano mag-ask sa client ng tinatawag natin retainer's fee. So, magkaiba ito sa per hour. In fact, dapat matutunan nyo talaga kung paano mag-request or kung paano i-convince si client na bayaran kayo ng retainer's fee. Alam nyo kung bakit? Kasi, ang trabaho natin no, being a virtual professional, we are actually earning what we call an active source of income. Diba? Active source of income. Pag sinabi natin active source, kung hindi ka magtratrabaho, tama ba? O, oh, active. Kung hindi ka magtratrabaho, no? kung hindi ka magtratrabaho, wala kang sweldo. No work, no pay. So, yan yung ibig sabihin ng active source of income. For example, magtrabaho ka ng 4 hours a day. So, babayaran ka lang ng 4 hours. Eh, kailangan mo ng mas maraming pera. Kaya magtrabaho ka ng 8 hours. Pero kulang pa rin yung kinikita mo. So, nag-work ka ng another 8 hours. So, 16 hours ka na magtrabaho. Pero kulang pa rin sa iyo. Naghanap ka pa ng client o di 24 hours na yon. Kung ikaw lang mag-isa, baka hindi mo siya kakayanin. ba? Kasi, you are asking your clients with hourly rate. You are paid per hour kasi. On the other hand, pag sinabi natin retainer's fee, babayaran ka ng client ng monthly, nung fix ba, kung magkano yung monthly na ibabayad sa'yo. Pero, ang kagandahan nun, you are not anymore required na mag-report 4 hours a day, 8 hours a day, and so on. Kasi retainers kita. Ang ibig sabihin, as long as you can deliver the service, okay na yon. Parang kagaya halimbawa ng mga bookkeepers. Alam niyo yung mga bookkeepers, di ba? Di ba ang mga bookkeepers, binabayaran natin sila ng ano? Binabayaran natin sila ng why uh, na? Okay. Binabayaran sila ng tinatawag natin retainer's fee. Meron akong bookkeeper sa KOM. Binabayaran ko siya kada buwan. Yung bookkeeper na yon nagre-report ba every day? Hindi. Yung bookkeeper ba, binabayaran ko ang benefits? Hindi rin. Kasi in-outsource ko siya. In-outsource. 
at binabayaran ko siya ng retainer's fee. Kaya ang kanyang responsibility is asikasuhin ang aming business renewal, ang aming monthly taxes, ang quarterly, ang annual taxes, and so on. Kung baga, nagtratrabaho siya kung kailan niya kailangan, pero yung bayad po sa kanya, every month, fix yon. So you see the difference of working na babayaran ka per hour and working na babayaran ka with a retainer's fee. Currently, on my professional experience, ako, kinukuha ako ng ibang mga businesses, local and international, as their digital marketing um, consultant. Kaya ang bayad nila sa akin, retainer's fee. So, kada buwan, babayaran ako ng mga clients ng ganitong amount of money, pero hindi ako required mag-report every day. Hindi ako required na kausapin sila every day. Kung kailan nila ako kailangan, kung, kung meron silang tanong, sasagutin ko. ba diba? Kung meron silang gustong i-clarify, i-explain ko. In regards to my duties and responsibilities, as a digital marketer. Kasi, kapag meron ka ng, tawag dyan, meron ka na, kung retainers, fee ka na, this is somehow what we call a passive source of income. Passive. Kasi kunyari, babayaran ka ng client ng 5,000 every month, or at least fix no na kada buwan, meron kang ma-receive na 5,000 by doing consultancy. Yun yung sa mga individuals na uh, kumbaga walang talent. Walang talent of ano of managing people kumbaga. So that's why um, kung kaya naman ninyong gumawa ng team, no? If you are planning to create a team, kaya mong mag-manage ng tao. So pwede ka rin namang mag-level up sa pagiging isang digital entrepreneur. So, I hope na naintindihan natin yung difference between the hourly rate at saka yung tinatawag nating retainer's fee. So, that's why na as you grow in this kind of business, mas matutunan nyo yung mga ganyang klaseng mga kalakaran sa ganitong klaseng industriya. Dito sa Knights of Online Marketers, meron kaming tinatawag na Ladderized Training Program. Ano bang ibig sabihin ng Ladderized? Ibig sabihin level by level. Kung baga sa college education, merong mga prerequisite kung baga na bago mo kunin ito, dapat kunin mo muna ito. Siyempre, you need to ano ba, um, you need to undergo um, level of training programs. You cannot jump into a specialization agad-agad. If you are a newbie, kung baguhan kayo sa ganitong klaseng trabaho, kailangan nyo muna talagang magsimula sa baba. Kailangan nyo magsimula sa first level. You need to build first a strong foundation of your digital career. Kaya hindi dapat kayo mag-jump into a specialization. Kasi baka ang mangyayari, mahihirapan kang intindihin. For example, um, real estate virtual assistant. Meron na siyang specialization. And the specialization is focusing on assisting real estate brokers or yung mga real estate agents. Kung plano mong maging isang real estate PA, dapat meron kang previous knowledge and skills competencies sa pagiging isang general virtual assistant. Kasi baka mahihirapan ka with some task na ibibigay sa inyo ng inyong clients related to real estate kung wala ka pang foundation ng karir mo. Mahihirapan ka. Kaya, naisipan kong 
mag-create ng tinatawag nating ladderized training program. Ladder, hagdanan. Every skill na matututunan niyo, that's actually one level up. Every time that you are learning a particular skill, you are also increasing your level of skills competencies. Kaya dito sa Knights of Online Marketers, hindi lang VA and Digital Marketing Training ang pinoprovide namin. In fact, meron kami seven stages of our ladderized training program. Pitong stages yon. So kung baga, kung magpapatayo ka ng bahay, di ba ang uunahin gawin? ang foundation. Uunahin ba ninyo gawa yung atep or yung bubong? Di ba? Hindi. You will always start from building a strong foundation. So, maghuhukay muna kayo para sa mga poste. Di ba? Para habang nagko-construct kayo ng, ng bahay, matibay. Na kahit anong earthquake man ang dumaan or bagyo, your foundation will remain strong. So parang ganyan din ang analogy pagdating sa ganitong klaseng trabaho. Alam ko na every one of us excited na kumita ng malaking pera. Sino ba naman ang hindi? Pero kung talagang baguhan kayo sa ganitong klaseng business, you always need to start small. But take note, you need to dream big. Great things starts from small beginnings. Di ba sinabi yan sa atin ng Milo? It will always start from a small beginning. At saka huwag kayong matakot makipag-compete sa mga nag-e-exist na ngayon. Walang problema kahit na beginner ka pa lang. Kasi yung mga expert, dati din yan silang mga beginners eh. So that's why the best thing that you can do is to always invest sa inyong intellectual kapatang at i-convert dapat into skills. So meron kami a total of seven ladderized training program. So malalaman natin ngayon kung nasaan na ba kayo dito. Anong stage na ba kayo dito sa aming ladderized program. The first stage starts with what we call the VAOP or yung tinatawag namin virtual assistant orientation program. So meron naman kaming mga regular um, learning session ito for free. So kaya if you want to be updated of this kind of program, you can always like our Facebook page, no? paki-like ng aming Facebook page, para you are always updated sa mga schedule ng aming mga training. Free at saka um, paid. If you are also planning to, to get some free training, uh, meron na rin kami ina-upload na mga videos sa aming YouTube channel. So that's why I am also inviting you na maliban sa ilalike ninyo ang Facebook page ng Knights of Online Marketers, I am also inviting you to subscribe sa YouTube channel na ang pangalan is Queen of the Knights. It's because we are uploading there videos na educational at mapapakinabangan natin, especially those who are planning to start their digital career. Ang VAOP kasi, or ang Virtual Assistant Orientation Program, eto yung learning session natin for proper mindsetting. Kaya kung hindi kayo nakapag-participate sa aming VAOP, it's okay. Kasi kasama naman sa inyong session ang mindset, yung ginagawa natin ngayon. 
kaya nga every time talaga na na bago magsimula ang training proper meron muna kaming session like this na tinatawag namin pre-training assessment or PTA. So, kaya huwag kayong mag-alala kung hindi pa kayo nakapag-join sa aming DAOP kasi ginagawa na rin naman natin ngayon. But of course, if you want to participate comprehensively sa aming DAOP, we are offering it on a monthly basis for free and it is usually every first Sunday of the month. Okay? Every first Sunday of the month ito. Kasi kung meron ka ng proper mindset, aware ka na kung paano ba talaga magsimula online, then you can now proceed on the second level of our training program. Yung tinatawag namin SDEP or Skills Development and Enhancement Enhancement Program. Actually, dito kayo ngayon enrolled. Ito yung um, in-enrollan ninyo. Our Skills Development and Enhancement Program or otherwise known as the Integrated Comprehensive Virtual Assistant and Digital Marketing Training Program. So, yan yung, kumbaga yan yung ano niya, mahabang pangalan. Because our SDEP is actually a combination of management and marketing. Kaya this is beneficial for both aspiring na maging virtual assistant or aspiring na maging isang digital marketer. Yung SDEP namin, meron ito siyang sampung modules. Na? Meron siyang a total of 10 modules in all. So, meaning to say, ang uh, ituturo ko sa inyo, ang ituturo ko sa inyo is a total of 10 modules in all. So, sa loob ng 20 days, meron tayong um, 10 modules na madidiscuss or ma-encounter. So, may mga module na one session lang, may mga modules naman na three sessions. Meron din namang two. Kasi depende kasi yan sa skills na tinuturo. I am going to paste here sa notepad yung sampung modules na kasama sa program na inenrolan ninyo ngayon. So, andito, nakikita nyo ngayon sa inyong screen ang SDEP 1 hanggang SDEP number 10 natin. So, ito yung mga coverage ng ating integrated, comprehensive, virtual assistant, and digital marketing training program. The first module, ito yon, the SDEP 1, it's email management. So, the skill is email management. I am going to share to you um, some of the administrative services that you need to know for personal, for business, and work-related projects. So, that's the first module na i-cover natin sa inyong learning session. Second module will focus on your creative service, particularly on visual content marketing, especially on how to create basic designs in order for you to convey valuable information to your audience. The third module that we are going to cover is another creative service and this is all about video marketing. I am going to teach you on how to create an effective video resume and of course promotional videos para magamit ninyo in promoting your brand in the internet 
making it closer to your potential clients. Ikaapat na module is yung content management, especially on how to publish and optimize your content in the internet. So that's content management. Module number five will focus on content marketing, especially on how to write and edit a business blog following the guidelines of Google or yung pinatawag nating mga ranking factors. Ang content management and content marketing, otherwise known as business blogging, yung gagawin natin. Step number six, we are now going to cover a social media platform that is close to your heart, yung Facebook management. So I am going to teach you how to build your online presence using a Facebook business page. Yung SDEP 7 is partner ng 6. And this will cover Facebook marketing. So I am going to give insights on how to find and capture the right people using Facebook business pages. SDEP 8, no? ikawalong module natin, is yung email marketing. Sir, syempre kung merong email management, kasi email management yung module 1, so meron siyang partner na email marketing, which is the module number 8. I am going to teach you on how to generate leads as your subscribers to your business mailing list. Module number 9 is video management. So, ito yung partner ng module number 3 na video marketing. So, video marketing, my partner na video management, I am going to teach you on how to create a YouTube channel for business promotion. Okay, so, yan yung mga skills training natin. Kasi pagdating ng module number 10, hindi na siya skills training. It will now cover um, activities on how to prepare your freelancer toolkit and for you to learn client acquisition. So, hindi na siya skills training. Um, Kung baga, parang this is, ano ba, parang bonus na sa inyong program. So, tutulungan namin kayo on how to prepare your toolkit and of course, on how you can acquire clients. So, ito yung sampung modules na kasama sa inyong training program. So, it's a combination of virtual assistant training and digital marketing. Okay, so, na-enumerate na natin yung nine na skills. So, meaning to say, at the end of the training program, you will learn nine basic skills. Email management, visual content marketing, video marketing, content management, content marketing, Facebook management, Facebook marketing, email marketing, and video management. So that's a total of nine skills na pwede niyong ibenta sa magiging future clients niyo. Ma'am, bakit ang daming skills? Because you are still starting. Kaya nga ang tawag sa inyo, especially I'm talking about the newbies, no? kaya ang pinaka-safe na job title na pwede ninyong gamitin is yung general virtual assistant. So, meaning to say, wala pa kayong napiling specialization. Okay? Kaya you need to be exposed to as many skills as possible. Kailangan ninyong ma-expose sa iba't ibang skills para ma-identify ninyo 
kung saan kayo may strength at kung saan kayo may weakness. Kung baga, kailangan mong ma-identify kung saan kayo mas comfortable na i-offer. Ma'am, may mga skills ba sa training program na mahirap? Yes, meron. Meron din namang mga madali. Kaya nga i-expose namin kayo sa mga skills na to para at the end of the training program, doon ka mag magkakaroon ng reflection during what we call, kasi kung meron tayong PTA or pre-training assessment, ang pinaka-last ninyo na session with me is yung PTE or post-training evaluation. So, kung baga bago mag-module 1, merong PTA, Parents Teachers Association. Ang pre-training assessment. Yan yung PTA. Pag natapos na natin ang module number 10, ang pinaka-last session naman natin is PTE or post-training evaluation. So, dito na natin ngayon, um, kung baga, i-identify ano yung mga skills that you are comfortable at ano yung mga skills na kailangan nyo pang mag-level up. So, that's the program kung saan kayo enrolled as of the moment. And that is part of our second ladderized training program na tinawag namin Skills Development and Enhancement Program or SDEP niya. Kaya ko siya tinawag na SDEP kasi kung wala pa kayong skills, kunyari, ma'am, wala kaming alam about email marketing. So, i-develop natin ang skills na yun. Ma'am, meron na kaming konting alam sa Facebook management. So, kung meron na kayong konting alam, then we are just going to enhance it. Kaya we call the program as Skills Development and Skills and Enhancement Program siya. So, ma'am, after dito sa training program namin, what's next? So, meron kaming mga other programs pa na ino-offer dito sa aming digital classroom because the third ladderized training program that we are offering is yung pinatawag namin CPEP or Continuing um, Professional Education Program. So, kung baga CPEP, Continuing, ibig sabihin, after your SDEP, dapat hindi muna kayo mag, ano, kung baga, ay, you need to continue learning pa rin. For you to leverage, di ba? And advance your career. So, we called our programs as CPEP. Ganito kasi yan. Ang SDEP namin, okay, the SDEP, ano po siya? Um, yung pinatawag namin entry level. Entry level siya na training program. Kung baga para talaga sa mga newbies. Ang CPEP naman namin, ang tawag namin dito, nasa intermediate level na siya. So, kung baga, uh, meron ka ng alam no? sa pagiging isang virtual assistant or meron ka ng client and you want to learn more. Because the more you learn, mas mapadali ang chance na tumaas ang level of skills competencies mo. So, ibig sabihin yung CP, CPEP namin, eto na yung mga one day or eight hours namin na training programs. Kagaya, for example, ng Photoshop. Kasi yung ituturo ko sa SDEP, mga web-based yon Hindi kasama ang Photoshop. Kaya kung gusto mong i-leverage ang creative service mo at gusto mo mga pag-aralan ng Photoshop, 
meron kaming one-day training for that. Tapos meron din kaming um, SEO. Kasi hindi kasama ang SEO. I mean, hindi in-depth ang discussion natin ng SEO sa um, S-DEP ninyo. Siyempre, I am, I am um, ubaga, conducting a training sa mga mga newbies talaga. Kaya baka mag-internal bleeding kayo if we are going to include SEO sa inyong SDEP program. Pero I am going to give you some of the ranking factors to Google. Kaya kung gusto ninyong i-leverage ang inyong knowledge about optimization, meron kaming CPEP for that. Meron din kaming e-commerce by using Amazon and Shopify, meron kami and other training programs. Okay? Pinopost naman namin yung mga upcoming schedules namin. Now, the fourth level of our skills competencies is yung ALTP. So kung merong entry, merong intermediate, meron kami mga advanced. Mga advanced level training program. Or kumbaga, eto na yung training namin if you are planning to specialize. So kumbaga, eto na yung pang expert level ba. So meron kami mga ano naman to, two days or mga 16 hours naman ito na training. Like for example, meron kami real estate for two days. Mga advanced level, meron kami online accounting no meron din kami SEO na 2 days pero advanced level na to meron din kami Photoshop meron kami video editing and so on belong yan sila sa ALTP or our advanced level training program syempre di ba entry expert dapat na derive kasi kung diretso ka sa expert level or advanced level baka baka ma-overwhelm ka, ma-shock ka to the point na baka hindi mo na masyado na iintindihan yun. So, the first level is BAOP. The second level is the STEP. The third level, level is the CPEP. And the fourth level is the ALTP. Yung ikaliba namin, dito na papasok yung BMOP or our um, tinatawag namin digital digital marketing orientation program. Ito na yung ito yung program namin intended para sa gustong magkaroon ng basic knowledge in regards to digital marketing. Kumbaga, bago sila mag-engage selecting digital marketing as their specialization. So, meron kaming mga programs na ino, program na ino-offer for the mindset. Kasi kung merong VAOP, that's an orientation for virtual assistants, meron tayong VMOP, orientation naman para sa mga future digital marketers. And of course, kung merong VMOP, meron tayong DMTP or yung Digital Marketing Training Program. Kagaya ang ipawa ng Facebook, ng Instagram, ng LinkedIn. Yan, kasama yan sa aming DMTP or our digital, yung training proper na talaga siya. Yung orientation kasi it's just a seminar. Or since digital, it's just a webinar. Pero ang DMPP, it's really a training program. Ang DMOP namin, same with VAOP, libre din namin siyang offer sa mga Filipinos. And usually, our DMOP is every second Sunday of the month. Diba ang VAOP is every first Sunday? Ang DMOP every second Sunday of the month. 
usually it's afternoon talaga. So, di ba, you are now building a foundation, tapos nag-intermediate ka, nag-advance ka, umaakyat na yung pag-construct mo. At syempre, yung pinakahuli, kung di ba yung bahay, ang pinakahuli, yung lalagyan na natin ng atep or ng roof ng gubong. So the same with your career. You also need to learn how to protect especially yung income na marireceive niyo. The reason why kung bakit po ito in-include sa aming training program, itong ika-7 na to, kasi marami akong kilalang freelancers or virtual assistants na na ano, wala pang naiipon. Alam nyo kasi, I am also doing PayPal and cash mail. So, nag-e-encash ako ng PayPal. Ibig sabihin, yung PayPal fund ninyo, transfer nyo sa akin, tapos papalitan ko yan siya ng cash. I am just going to get some percentage. Meron kasi nagpapa-encash sa akin talaga on a regular basis, na mga existing na na mga virtual assistants. Kung baga parang suki ko na. Tapos, palaging reason sa akin, emergency. Kasi kung transfer mo kasi sa banko mo yan, aabuti ng 2, 3, or baka 4 days pa bago mo ma-withdraw. Hindi na sila makapaghintay ng 4 days eh, kasi they really need, need the money daw. So from that alone, parang na-realize ko na bakit hindi sila makapaghintay ng 4 days or ng 2 days or ng 3 days bago makumpleto ang transfer? Wala ba silang naipong pera para yun muna ang gamitin nila for their expenses while they are waiting for the complete transfer? Parang yun lang yung na-realize ko. I'm not saying all naman na nagpapa-encash sa akin, walang naiipong pera. Pero parang, di ba, parang, parang mapapaisip ka ba na, bakit, bakit agad-agad? Or palagi na lang siya nagpapa-encash? Yung previous niya ba na pina-encash sa akin, wala nang may natira? Wala ba siyang may naipon doon? Wala ba siyang may naitabi? Na para yun muna ang gamitin niya, while waiting for the transfer to be completed. So, di ba parang ganun yung na-realize ko yun. Kaya, yung kaapat namin na training program, pinawag namin FLMP or Financial Literacy and Management Program. So, tinuturuan namin yung aming mga, grad, mga graduates or even not graduates of the KOM programs kung paano ba dapat natin i-invest, i-safe keep, ipago, saan ba dapat na vehicle ilagay yung mga US dollars na kikitain natin in the future. Kaya, kailangan maglagay ng roof. And another reason kung bakit ko siya um, sinama sa program, kasi ako din, when I am still a freelancer, yung wala pang KOM, one day, millionaire din kasi ako noon. Kapag may perang datating sa akin, hala, gastos ako ng gastos. Kung baga, dumarating din kasi talaga sa buhay natin na parang gusto natin ipagmayabang kung ano man yung meron tayo. Kung may bago kang cellphone, gusto mo, ipost mo talaga sa FB. Kung meron kang nahawakang pera na 5,000, ipopost mo sa FB. ba? Kung meron kang um, may nabili kang mga, may nag-shopping ka, may nabili kang bagong sapatos, may nabili kang bagong damit, pipicturan mo, ipopost mo talaga. Nag-Starbucks ka, pinicturan mo, pinost mo talaga. Kung baga, um, it's, kung baga, it's um, a normal um culture na sa mga Filipinos na ganun yung ginagawa talaga natin. But there are also some naman na kinikip na lang nila as sa kanila yon. Pero if there's someone na pinakita nila sa FB na nasa Starbucks sila, dapat hindi tayo mainis or hindi tayo makafeel ng something because that's, that person is just sharing 
some happiness, di ba? Or baka meron siyang na-achieve. At saka parang gusto niyang ipakita sa tao siguro na kaya niyang i-afford ang ganitong bagay. So, wala na tayong concern doon kung inutang niya ba yung pera. Pero, we should not um, break the happiness of those who are posting in social media. Kasi tayo din naman, naging ganyan din naman tayo. Ako dumating na sa point na kapag meron ako mga, mga nabibiling mga bago, pinopost ko talaga lagi yan sa social media. To brag, para sana ipagmalaki. Pero syempre, ang interpretation lagi sa atin, nagmamayabang tayo, nami-misinterpret. And it's okay. Walang problema doon. Huwag niyong pansinin yung sinasabi ng iba. Okay? So, because real friends or individuals na talagang tutuo sa'yo, maiintindihan nila kung ano man yung ginagawa mo even sa social media. But anyway, naisingit ko lang naman yun because, as mentioned, dati ganyan din ako, eh, gastos ako ng gastos. Walang naiiwan sa pera ko. Until dumating yung time na wala talaga akong savings. Way back 2012, 2013, mga ganyan, na-scam kasi ako ng 200,000 pesos sa isang investment. And hard-earned money ko yun. Kaya nung na-scam ako, doon ko na-realize na nasa maling vehicle ko siya nilagay. Kaya pinag-aralan ko kung saan pwedeng mag-save ng pera. Maliban sa pagsisave sa banko, saan pa ba pwedeng ilagay? So kaya I distributed my salary before. Nilagay ko yung iba sa cooperative that can gather higher interest. Meron akong nilagay sa stock market. Meron ding time deposit. Tapos yung mga small Um, investment lang sa mga micro-financing na mga establishments or yung mga cooperatives. Natutunan ko yan because I am participating sa iba't ibang mga financial literacy. So kaya para ma-encourage din ang mga future virtual professionals on how to properly save their money, meron kaming tinatawag na financial literacy and management program. So, eto yung aming seven ladderized training program. BAOP, SDEP, CPEP, ALPP, the DMOP, the DMPP, and the FLMP. And again, you are currently enrolled sa aming skills development and enhancement program or otherwise known as the Integrated Comprehensive Virtual Assistant and Digital Marketing Training Program. Okay? Alam nyo kasi, di ba, M3, Intermediate, tapos Expert, meron kasi tayong pinatawag na Hierarchy. Meron tayong tinatawag na hierarchy of virtual professionals. Tatlong stages lang yun. Una, yung tinatawag natin entry level or yung mga low-skilled workers. So, syempre, if you are still starting your career, if you are still a newbie in the industry, So, dito ka talaga nabilong sa tinatawag nating entry level or low-skilled workers. Siyempre, nagsisimula ka pa lang. Kaya pwede kang maghanap ng mga job opportunities na nabebelong sa entry level muna. Halimbawa, mga web research, mga data entry, data mining, data encoding, or as simple as mga mga management na mga task, file and data management, mga email management, and so on. You can always start offering your management um, skills, management services. Entry level, 
So lahat nagsisimula dito. And usually, ang mga entry level, nagre-rate yan sila ng 3 to 5 US dollars per hour. Medyo malaki na, no? Akalain mo yun yung 5 US dollars na sa entry level papala yan sila na category. Okay? So that's the first level of the hierarchy of virtual professionals. The entry level or yung pinatawag natin mga low-skilled workers. Kaya nga sabi ko sa inyo kanina, you need to keep on learning para umakyat yung level mo. Every skill is one level up. Kasi habang tumatagal na kayo sa ganitong klaseng industry, from entry level, mapupunta na kayo sa intermediate level. Or yung tinatawag natin medium. Mga medium skilled workers. Medium skilled. Usually, ang nasa intermediate level, yan na yung mga nasa one year of working experience or two years. Mga ganyan, one to two years of working experiences. And they can actually rate themselves with six to eight USD per hour. So imagine, six to eight US dollars per hour. So yan yung pwede ninyong i-ask na rate sa inyong magiging future clients. Kasi kaya mo namang ano, kaya mo nang ipagtanggol ang sarili mo. Every time the client will ask you, Piper, what are the skills you can offer? O di ba marami ka nang pwedeng masabi? You are already competent. So kaya pwede ka na talagang mag-rate ng 6 to even hanggang 8 US dollars per hour. And of course, never stop learning. Because the moment you stop learning, that's the time that you are start dying. Learning never stops, di ba? Kasi, pag, pagdating mo sa intermediate level, dyan na nagsisimula na mag-identify ka ng magiging specialization mo. Saan mo ba gustong mag-specialize? Kasi dati, general VA ka lang. Tapos, pipili ka na ngayon na from general VA, naging virtual assistant, Tapos, naging specialized virtual assistant. Like, parang ganito yung mangyayari ba? GVA ka muna, general virtual assistant. Ang intermediate level mo, kay virtual assistant ka na talaga. Wala na yung salitang general. Tapos, naging online accounting virtual assistant ka. Because that's the specialization na pinili mo. And that's what we call expert level. Or, yung pinatawag natin, mga highly skilled workers. Usually, um, kumikita na to sila ng nasa 9 to even 15 US dollars per hour. Mga nasa 9 to 15 US dollars per hour. Real estate and SEOVA, sila yung ilan sa mga highest paid. O yung talagang um, malalaki, matataas yung kanilang sweldo na nare-receive sa kanilang mga clients. So kaya again, kung napansin ninyo, our training program is again ladderize. Okay? So pag sinabi natin ladderize, it will always start from the, the entry, intermediate, and then expert. That's the hierarchy. Kung baga parang mga doctors. Di ba yung mga doctors, bago yan sila naging anesthesiologist, ophthalmologist, cardiologist, tinawag muna yan silang resident physician. Mga residente. Kaya ang mga resident physician and exposed muna sa emergency room and exposed sa ward in exposed sa delivery room, in exposed sa operating room, and exposed sa x-ray. Diba? Para they can actually um, ano yan, identify 
saan ba sila comfortable? Saan ba sila may comfort? Saan sila convenient? Saan sila may strength? Kunyari, pagka-assign nila sa operating room, hala parang feel ko laging mag-opera-operative. Ah, sige, mag-general surgeon ako. Doon na nila na ano, na-identify yung kanilang magiging specialization in the future. Na-assign sa eye center. Nag-assist sa mga ophthalmologist, mag-opera ng katarak. Tapos, niya, tapos naisip niya, ay parang parang ayaw ko man mag-opera sa mata. So hindi niya pipiliin yung ophthalmology na specialization. So ganun din yung dapat gawin natin. Kailangan muna nating expose ang sarili natin to as many skills as possible and identify your strengths versus weaknesses. Like for example, realistically, sa akin, alam nyo bang hindi ako marunong mag-photoshop? For 10 years of being in the industry, wala akong interest to learn Adobe Photoshop. Dati meron. Nag-aral naman ako ng Photoshop. For me to experience how to do photo editing, graphic design me. Pero nung nag-attend ako ng one-day Adobe Photoshop training, talagang nasabi ko sa sarili ko na mahirap pala. Kaya hindi ako nagkaroon ng interest. I am not comfortable with graphic designing using Photoshop. Pero, as a virtual assistant, kailangan kong matutunan din kasi ang creativity. Especially kapag social media yung kinahandle natin. Kaya, may mga alternative solution naman para makakreate tayo ng graphics. Kung baga, in every problem that you will encounter, there is always a solution. Minsan kasi tamad lang tayong maghanap ng solution. So kaya, hindi man ako marunong mag-Adobe Photoshop, it doesn't mean that I am not creative. Kasi hindi lang naman Photoshop ang pwede nating gamitin to deliver creative service. Marami pang iba dyan. Okay? Kaya, as a virtual assistant, eto ang kailangan yung kandaan. Meron tayong tatlong major services na ino-offer as a virtual assistant. Kaya kapag tinatanong kayo ng clients ninyo during an interview, kunyari, in-interview ka na ng client mo, no? uh, in-interview ka ng client, the usual question talaga ng client is something like, tell me more about yourself. So kapag naririnig niyo ang tanong na yan during an interview, eto yung usual na sinasagot natin. Kunyari, may interview ka sa client mo na tapos tinanong ka niya, sabi, Hi Piper, how are you today? Can you please tell me more about yourself? Tapos ang nadinig ko palaging sagot, Hi there, hi there Robert. By the way, my name is Piper Rambuanga. I am based here in Davao City, Philippines. I am 37 years old and I graduated with a bachelor's degree in nursing at Notre Dame University in my beloved hometown in Cotabato City. Usually, ganun yung ating sagot eh. Um, we're in, technically speaking, parang may mali sa sagot mo. Because the question there, tell me more about yourself. So meaning the client is asking for information or data na wala sa resume mo. Kasi nung sinabi mong my name is Ronald Rambuanga, nabasa niya na yon sa resume I am based here in Davao City, Philippines. And doon na rin yan sa resume mo. I am 37 years old. And doon na rin yan sa resume mo. I graduated Bachelor of Science in Nursing. And doon na rin. Parang inulit mo lang. The client actually is asking for more information. Kaya kung ano yung wala sa resume mo, yun yung mention mo. And usually, ang wala sa resume is yung attitude natin 
um, in working with a client. Pag sinabi nating attitude, ano ba yung meron ka na wala sa iba? Or what makes you unique from your competitors? para ganyan. Kaya, dapat ganito ang magiging sagot nyo. So, ano to ha? Interview tip na tayo. Um, Piper, can you please tell me more about yourself? So, hi Robert. A pleasant day to you. By the way, my name is Piper Rabuanga. I believe that I am a hard-working individual. I can work in uh, with minimal supervision. I am keen to every details and I have a positive outlook in my digital career. I can work more than 10 hours a day if you want and I can work in flexible schedule. So something like that. Kumbaga, you are going to showcase your attitude. You are a hardworking individual. You are competent in English, both in verbal and written, ganyan. You have, um, you are focused or you are a goal-oriented person and always focus on the given task with minimal supervision, well, something like that. So that's why um, you need to showcase your attitude since yun ang wala sa inyong resume. Kaya tapos kapag tinanong ka ng client, what are the services you can offer? It's actually different from the question, although parang synonymous, pero magkaiba dapat yung isasagot niyo. If the client will ask, Piper, what are the services you can offer? is different from the question, what are the skills you can offer? And something like that. So magkaiba yung dalawa. Okay? So that's why again guys, no, um kapag sinabi natin services, it refers to the general. And as a virtual assistant, meron tayong tatlong major services na pwede nating i-offer sa ating mga clients. A C P. Ano yung letter A? We can offer our clients with our administrative service. We can also offer our clients with our creative service. And we can offer our clients with our technical service. ACP. 80% of our task as a virtual assistant is more on administrative. 80% of your task, administrative talaga yan. While 10% of your task is creative and the remaining 10% is your technical skills. Pag sinabi natin technical, ito yung ano. Kung baga ang technical, yung blog management. Dapat you know how to manage a website or a blog or something like that. So, yan yung services na tinatawag. So, that's why if you will hear the question, what are the services you can offer, eto yung mga pwede mong i-mention. On the other hand, if the client will ask you, what are the skills you can offer, yun na yung enumerate mo yung mga skills na meron ka. Like email management, visual content marketing, kung baga ang skills mga specific ang service general. Ito ang, ang isa pang tip na isishare ko sa inyo. Kung napansin niyo ang pangalan ng ating module, mahaba, di ba? Tapos, it, it starts with um, how. Di ba? Para siyang question. Alam niyo, eto tip ko to ha, sinadya ko talagang ganyan kahaba ang pangalan ng ating module. Why? Kasi pwede yung siyang gamitin as your kodigo or cheat sheet during your interview. Alam mo kasi yung mga first timers na ma-interview, kakabahan yan sila. To the point na yung kaba, akyat sa utak, mental block, nag-practice naman siya ng isasagot. 
Pero nung tinanong na siya, yung actual interview na talaga, biglang nagka-mental block. Kaya every time na meron kayong client interview, no? every time na meron kayong client interview and the client will ask you, what are the skills you can offer? Actually, pwede yung man itong basahin. Tingnan nyo ang example ko ha, or pakinggan. Hi there, Piper. Can you please tell me more about yourself? Hi there, Robert. By the way, you can call me Piper. I am based here in Davao. I believe that I am a hardworking individual. I have a positive attitude. I have a positive outlook in my digital career. I can even work with minimal supervision. I am focused on every task that is given to me because I am a goal-oriented individual. Tapos mag-smile kayo. Kasi kung nag-smile kayo, lalo na kapag ano, video or come-to-come -come interview, pag nag-smile, so meaning parang yan yung, parang yun yung period mo. Kung baga, that's the time that you will end, tapos isingit na yung client. Um, because I am focused, because I am a goal-oriented individual. Huwag nyo nang sabihin, that's it, client. Minsan kasi may nagsasabi ng ganyan. That's it. Oh, minsan, sa sobrahan nilang taba, that's it po. O di ba? <laughs> Biglang nagpo sa client, foreigner. That's it. Meron taga kong sudyante before na understandable naman kasi nga, anak siya ng farmer. Nung kinuha siya ng client, nung kinuha na siya yung nasinabi ng client, okay, congratulations, you passed the interview, and you can actually start Monday next week. Tapos sabi pa niya, wow, sige. Di ba? <laughs> so, sobrang niya ka-excited no, na magtrabaho. Talagang sabi niya, sige. What? Sige. Tapos, it means perfect. Wow, perfect. Alibay na lang sa segue yon. Dapat marunong ka rin sa ganyan. Uh, mo kayo magpo. Huwag niyo sabihin, that's it. I am a goal-oriented person. That's it. Huwag nang ganun. Mag-smile ka lang, understandable na end ka na. And I am a goal-oriented person. Okay, Piper. What are the services you can offer to my business? As a virtual assistant, even though I am a newcomer in the industry, I am confident that I, that I can offer you my administrative, my creative, and my technical services. Oh, smile ka agad. What are the skills you can offer? So, ito yung tip ko. Pwede yung basahin. Pero huwag naman yung obvious na binabasa nyo. Okay, what are the skills you can offer? Um, as a virtual assistant, offering the three major services that I mentioned, I can offer you my email management skill, especially on some administrative services for personal, business, and work-related projects. I can also offer you my visual content marketing, especially on how to create basic designs in order for us to convey valuable information. As a virtual assistant, I can also offer you my video marketing skill, especially on how to create promotional videos for your business. If you are going to ask me to create some business blog, I can also offer you my content management and content marketing skill, especially on how to write, how to edit, and how to publish a business blog following the guidelines of Google. In terms of social media, I can offer you my Facebook management skill, especially on how to build your online presence using a business page, as well as how to find and capture the right people using Facebook business pages. Diba? Kung baga para siyang ano, para siyang ano tawag dyan, um, tawag dyan, um, yan, para ka talaga meron ng na-prepare na script. Diba? Kaya yan yung another tip na isi-share ko sa inyo. Okay? That's the tip that I am going to share to you. Yan. Kaya you review the ano, you review the, tawag dyan, the name of the modules na, na nag-envol kayo because that can actually help you na, ano, that can actually help you to answer the question, 
what are the skills you can offer. Okay? Yan. So, at least meron na kayong mga preparation pa. Okay, so... So, alam na natin ngayon kung anong pinagkaiba ng skills at saka ng services. Although, pareho lang din naman yan sila. Kung baga, synonyms. Pero mas maganda kasi kung tama din yung isasagot natin. Kung specific ba talaga. Okay? So, yan yung mga pwede kong maibigay sa inyo na, na input. So, tandaan niyo ulit yung acronym na ACT or yung app administrative, creative, at saka yung technical, technical services. Now, di ba ilan lahat, ilang araw lahat ang training ninyo? Di ba it's a total of 20 days in all. 20 days ang inyong training. So more or less 20 days. Tapos nasa 3 to 4 hours kasi tayo per session. So ipagpalagay na natin 4 hours per session. So that's a total of 80 hours. Tapos uh, Monday to Friday yung ating klase. So 5 days. So 20 days divided by 5. So it's actually 4 weeks. ba? This is actually a 4 week training program. So, sa loob ng four weeks, nakasama niyo ako na panonoorin through a video, meron tayong mga ano, um, sharing of insights. Kung baga ako, magde-discuss muna. Tapos, pagkatapos kong mag-discuss, pangalawa, magde-demonstrate ako. At pangatlo, magka-hands-on kayo. This is pure webinar. So, meron akong ibibigay sa inyo na mga activities and those activities actually is ano, um, yung mga activities na yon nasa 20 in all. Actually, it's more than 20. Task may mga 0.1. Kunyari, 5.1, 5.2. So, that's like more than 20 tasks in all. Or ipagpalagay lang natin na hindi natin isama yung mga nasa point point. Um, that's a total of 20. And for for the benefit na malaman natin kung ano ba yung mga 20 tasks na yon, ita copy paste ko dito sa ating um tawag dito sa ating notepad para makita ninyo or at least meron kayong idea kung ano-ano ba yung mga task na kailangan yung i-comply o i-comply during the training program. Alam nyo kasi kung hindi ninyo i-comply yung mga task na ito you will only receive a certificate of um a certificate of training participation lang. Okay? You are just going to receive a certificate of training participation. Meron kasi kami dalawang klase ng certificate na i-issue sa inyo. Yung unang certificate, ang tawag natin, certificate of training participation and the other one is the Certificate of Training Completion. So obviously, pag sinabi natin completion, nagawa lahat ng task required for the training. Ang attendance, hindi na lang, hindi kami masyado strict with the attendance, hindi naman namin imomonitor talaga every day ang um, attendance ninyo. Kasi, mame-measure naman talaga namin na you are present or you really watch the video kasi meron kang masasubmit na output. Eh, syempre, hindi ka makakagawa ng output kung hindi mo, mo, kung hindi mo muna panonoorin ang video, di ba? So, that alone can measure na you, you watch and you are present on that particular session. 
Tapos magsasubmit kayo ngayon ng task niyo or ng output niyo. So, eto, nakita ko na. So, eto ang mga task na kailangan yung i-comply sa entire 4 weeks, 20 days, 80 hours na training. Alam nyo makakatulong itong mga outputs na to sa inyo. Kasi gagawa kayo ng online portfolio at the end of the training program na mas madiscuss ko naman din later. Task number one, merong email management na output. Task number two, merong basic designing na output. Task number three, merong business blog na output. Task number four is for you to get your expert offer certificate. Task number five is for you to create your Facebook page. So, meron siyang dalawang section sa phase sa uh, task 5. Kasama dyan ang content planning at saka yung pagsischedule na mga post. Task number 6 is for you to create your social media accounts like Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn. Task 7, that's actually your email marketing sign up form. The 7.1 is for you to submit your output generating leads. No? through email marketing. Task number eight is for you to create your YouTube channel for you to upload your promotional videos. And of course, task number nine is your video resume. 9.1 is the script of your video resume kasi iti-check ko muna yung script ninyo bago kayo mag-recording for your video resume. Task number 10, is for your promotional videos, promoting your virtual assistant business. Task number um, 11 is yung resume ninyo. Task 12 is your proposal letter. Task 13, yan yung inyong mga um, profiles sa iba't ibang freelancing sites. Task 14, yan naman yung profiles ninyo sa iba't ibang gig economy sites. Task 15 is for your online portfolio, yung website na nagagawin natin para sa inyong virtual assistant business. And task number 16 is for you to create your global payment services account like PayPal and Payoneer. Meron lang tayong apat na optional kasi meron tayong mock interview. Kung baga, through Skype, kakausapin ko kayo, kunyari magpapanggap ako as the client with series of questions. Para naman, at least you have an experience kung ano ba yung mga usual mga questions na tinatanong during interview. But actually, this is optional. Pati yung task 80 na campaign plan, that's also optional. And CSF or the client satisfaction feedback and the Facebook page review. Mga optional ito. So meaning, ang first 16 Yan yung mga kailangan yung i-comply talaga. So, ibig sabihin, meron akong makikitang 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 20 talaga. 20, 20 required outputs ang kailangan yung i-submit sa amin. Kasi kapag nakasubmit kayo nung task, no? Completed, complete um, task completed okay, task task completed meaning meron kayong marireceive na certificate of training completion pero guys kahit isang task plan ang missing one task missing automatically no? pag isang task ang kulang ang marireceive lang ninyo is your certificate of training participation lang. Okay? Of course, to be fair, to be fair with trainees na talagang nag -e effort at nag-invest uh, talaga ng kanilang time dito sa training na to. Anyway, pareho naman silang certificate of training, participation nga lang yung isa, completion naman yung isa. Don't worry, because along the way, tutulungan naman namin kayo kung paano gagawin yung mga task na yan. And I will be honest, training kasi ito. 
training, hindi man ito webinar. Diba? Training na may required to submit an output. But as mentioned, andito naman kami. Kasi guys, kahit na nanonood lang kayo ng um, video, meron din naman tayong group chat, di ba? So I am going to include you in the official group chat of your batch. Kasi kung meron kayong tanong, doon natin i-address. Kasi I am also available during the time na nakaschedule ang inyong learning session. Para kung meron kayong mga questions, related sa discussions tsaka sa demonstration na ginawa ko, you can always ask through our group chat. We always want you to be independent as much as possible because in reality, the moment na magkaroon kayo ng client, kayo lang din naman ang nasa bahay niyo. Wala kayong seat meet, di ba? Kaya masanay dapat tayo magtanong, di ba? Um, especially during the training. Kaya nga ang reminder sa atin ni Susan Roses, huwag mahihiyang magtanong. Because you need to ask questions. As many as that you want. Diba? So you can actually chat me. Okay? Um, chat ninyo ang tanong doon sa ating official group chat. So mas ini-encourage ko na mag-chat kayo on the group chat as compared na na directly lang sa akin. Kasi, yung tanong ninyo, baka yun din kasi yung tanong ng classmate ninyo. So, makakatulong din kayo in order for me to to share more contents through chat by asking questions. Huwag nyo nang is, ano yan, i-direct sa akin. Doon nyo na yan itanong. Even simple question lang yan, huwag kayong mahiya. Because every one of you here are equal. Okay? Pantay-pantay man tayong lahat. Trainees kayo. I'm your trainer. You can learn from me. I can also learn from you. Kasi meron din namang mga, mga knowledge competencies na alam nyo na, pero hindi ko pa alam. Kaya I will also appreciate it if you are also going to share your inputs. Okay? So, of course, merong deadline ang mga task kung kailan siya isubmit. Kasi nga, di ba, 20 days yung training natin. So, dapat, bago tayo makarating sa module number 10, yung freelancer toolkit, so, bago dapat tayo makarating sa session natin ng module 10, tapos na ang mga task ninyo. Why? Kasi, Anong ilalagay natin sa inyong online portfolio kung wala kayong isasubmit na mga output? Alam nyo kasi ang competition sa ganitong klasing trabaho is based on the skills na meron kayo. This is a skills-based employment. Kaya maniniwala lang ang client na talagang competent ka if magpapakita ka ng output. To see is to believe. Kung baga, if the client will ask you, Piper, I, um, um, I have an existing business online and I am planning to create a business blog to my brand. Do you think you can offer that skill to me? Tapos ang sagot mo, kasi sa isip mo, meron kang training sa amin. Sabi mo, ay, nag-training ako yung Ma'am Piper ng content marketing. Tapos ang sagot mo, yes, client. I know how to write, edit, and publish a business blog to help you promote your brand online. Tapos ang sagot ni client sa'yo, That's great, Piper. But before we proceed with the interview, can I check your sample business blog so I can evaluate how good you are in doing a business blog? Tapos wala kang maipakita. Sasabi mo sa client, Actually, client, I do not have any business blog. Baka isagot sa inyo ng client, then how can you help me? How can you help me promote my brand online if you yourself as a virtual assistant do not have any business blog at all? Diba? Kung baga, paano mo matutulungan isang kliyente kung hindi mo kayang tulungan ang sarili mo? 
iron kasi yan. Or it is ironic ba? Parang kung baga, kung baga yung mga, yung ibang karpintero, di ba? Karpintero sana siya, pero bakit yung bahay niya hindi niya maayos-ayos, di ba? Irony yun. Um, lawyer siya, pero siya ang nakakulong. O di ba ironic yun? Kasi ang trabaho ng mga lawyer, tagapagtanggol, di ba? ng mga kriminal, wala ganyan. Pero, yung sarili niyang kaso, hindi niya ipagtanggol. So, something like, it's an irony. Um, police ka, ikaw ang police, tapos, ikaw ang na-hold up. <laughs> parang, parang, parang ironic kata yun eh. Kasi, kunya, police ka, hinold up ka. <laughs> tapos, pag hold up sa'yo, tatawag ka, police! Police! <laughs> di ba, nakalimutan mo na, ikaw mismo, police. So parang ganun ba? How can you help a brand to build their presence online kung sarili mong brand as a virtual assistant hindi mo ma-promote-promote? Kaya part of your training program is for you to create your um, what we call your online stores. Alam mo kasi kailangan natin i-build rin ang ating business kasi di ba virtual assistant ka you are planning to be a virtual assistant. Gusto mong maging isang virtual assistant. At gusto mong magkaroon ng maraming clients. Pero paano ka maghahanap ng mga clients kung hindi mo alam kung paano maghanap ng mga clients? Kaya part of your training program is for you to introduce yourselves in the algorithm of the internet as early as now. Para whoever will search in the internet, like virtual assistant in the Philippines, for example, there's a possibility or there's a chance in the future that you will also appear in the search result. Kasi if your brand is searchable, then more projects will come. Diba? Kaya para, para makahanap ka ng client of your own, why not build what we call your online stores? Alam nyo kasi, sa pag-a-acquire ng mga clients, hindi lang naman sa mga online freelancing sites dapat tayo nakasalalay. Mga freelancing sites, kagaya halimbawa ni Upwork, di ba? Or ni online, uh, online jobs.ph, online jobs.ph, or yung TopTal, and a lot more, marami pa yan sila. Karamihan kasi sa atin, no? Akala ng karamihan sa mga baguhan sa industry nakikita lang natin ang client sa mga online freelancing sites. They thought na ang clients nasa Upwork lang, nasa online jobs.ph lang, freelancer.com lang, yun yung pagkakamali or yung wrong mindset ng karamihan sa mga newbies. Huwag lang kayong umasa sa mga online freelancing sites, especially that the competition there is getting tighter and tighter and tighter every day. Kasi meron din naman tayong mga chances na pwede tayong makahanap ng mga clients sa mga social media sites. Like for example, Facebook or yung professional Um, platform ng LinkedIn. Kaya dapat pag-aralan nyo din kung paano kayo maka-acquire ng clients by using LinkedIn. Meron din tayong tinatawag na mga gig economy sites. Ang online freelancing sites kasi majority ng nasa Upwork, it's either part-time or full-time. Pero meron din naman mga project-based. No? Pero majority of the project based na mga task or mga projects nga na short term lang ang duration, makikita natin yan sa mga gig economy sites. From the word gig, 
kunyari, singer ako. Tapos meron akong gig sa Manila. So, di ba short term lang yun? Kasi after nun, tapos na ang gig mo. Babayaran ka na kasi kumanta ka doon. Parang ganyan din yung analogy sa gig economy sites. Halimbawa, yung Fiverr, di ba? You can also get projects in Fiverr.com. Create your profile in Fiverr.com and try to add the skills na pwede mong ibenta sa mga potential clients tapos babayaran ka doon sa service or sa skill na in-offer mo. Okay? So that's the gig economy sites. Meron din tayong tinatawag na mga RPO or yung mga tinatawag nating recruitment process outsourcing. So this is different from the BPO or the business process outsourcing. Kasi ang RPOs, sila ang in-charge para hanapin ang best worker sa mga clients na nag-a-avail ng services nila. Kunyari, client ako. Maghahanap ako ng RPO at babayaran ko sila. Uutusan ko, RPO, um, hanapan mo nga ako ng magaling na virtual assistant sa Philippines. Tapos siyempre babayaran ng client yung agency. Tapos si agency, si RPO, maghahanap yan sila ng ano, ng maraming VAs. I-interviewin nila, bibigyan nila ng test task para ma-identify nila kung sino yung fitted doon sa hinahanap ng clients nun. Kung baga, they are called matchmakers. Tapos pag na-endorse na nila yung VA sa client, tapos na. Kung baga, wala na silang hawak doon sa VA. Kasi directly, they are working with the clients na. So, yun yung mga tinatawag na RPO. Kung baga para silang mga manpower agency. Pero yung manpower agency, kasi ang pinagkaiba naman nila sa RPO, under pa rin sila sa agency. Kunyari, security agency. Security guard ako. Di ba kung i-assign ako sa banko, under pa rin ako doon sa security agency na yon. But this time, sa RPOs, in the online outsourcing, magkaiba. Okay? Kasi pag na-endorse na yung VA sa client, tapos na yung relationship. But of course, yung ituturo ko sa inyo sa training, I want you to become an independent contractor. Yung ikaw mismo, ikaw mismo ang mag -e effort in building your brand as a VA. And in order for you to become an independent contractor, Ibig sabihin, hindi ka aasa kay freelancing sites. Um, hindi ka aasa sa social media sites. Pero gagamitin natin sila. Hindi ka aasa kay Fiverr. Hindi ka aasa kay RPO. Ikaw mismo ang mag-build ng sarili mong business. So that is what we call um, independent contracting. And I want you to be an independent contractor. Alam nyo kasi, Meron tayong dalawang klase ng mga home-based workers. Ang palaging nasa isip ng karamihan sa atin, basta nagtratrabaho sa bahay, freelancer ka agad ang tawag natin. Actually, hindi lahat ng nagtratrabaho sa bahay ang tawag natin freelancer. Hindi lahat nang nagtratrabaho sa bahay ang tawag natin freelancer. Take note of that para mas maging aware kayo na na kung ano ba talaga ang nature of job mo online. The first type of home-based workers, yun na yun. Ang tawag natin sa kanila, mga online freelancers. Meaning to say, if you are an online freelancer, ina-outsource kayo ng client. In-outsource ka. Pag in-outsource ka, ang usual document na pinipirmahan natin, ang tawag natin NDA or Non-Disclosure Agreement. Okay? So it's a Non-Disclosure Agreement. Pag sinabi natin agreement, it's different from what we call 
pay contract, di ba? So, pag, pag online freelancer ka, you are actually outsourced. Outsourced. Lagyan natin ng D. Kaya ang pipirmahan mong documents, non-disclosure agreement. Freelancer ka. Meaning, if you are a freelancer, you can still cater other clients. Hindi ipagbabawal yun ng kliyente mo. Pero, meron din namang nagtratrabaho sa bahay na hinire sila. Hiring is different from outsourcing. Yung bookkeeper ko, in-outsource ko yun, hindi ko hinire. Kasi kung ihahire ko si bookkeeper, babayaran ko siya ng minimum wage. Bibigyan ko siya ng mga leave benefits. Babayaran ko ang mga government juice niya kasi hired siya. Pero since in-outsource ko lang, so siya ang magpro-provide kung ano yung mga kakailangan niya. Kung, kung VA ka, tapos in-outsource ka, usually ikaw yung magpro-provide ng mga resources na kailangan mo, like computer, internet. Pero pag hinahire ka naman, usually ang company ang nagbabayad niyan or ang magpro-provide. Kagaya sa nangyayari ngayon, kasi pandemic, di ba? Um... Ma, yung tinatawag natin skeleton workforce is actually skeleton, hindi skeletal. Skeleton workforce. Um, di ba yung mga call center agents pinatrabaho sa bahay? Yung ibang non-voice pinatrabaho sa bahay? Tapos yung company pinadala sa kanila ang laptop, di ba? Binigyan pa talaga ng mga um, modems, mga routers internet connection, tapos ang kumpanya ang nagbabayad. Kasi nga, hired sila. Yung mga teachers natin na nag-online class, di ba? Of course, hindi naman lahat, pero yung ibang private institution, binigyan din ng routers ang mga teachers. Di ba? Of course, meron naman tayong existing na laptop. Mga um, educational supplies sa iba. Kasi they are hired. Pero pag outsource ka, ikaw ang magpo-provide ng mga kakailanganin mong mga resources. The second type of home-based workers, ang tawag natin sa kanila, mga remote employees. Kasi itong remote employees na today are hired. And they are going to sign what we call PC or yung tinatawag natin employment contract o so kontrata na to. Ibig sabihin, pwede siyang maging legal. Alam niyo, yung NDA kasi, um, hindi kasi ganun, hindi ganun ka-powerful ang kanyang legality. Kasi nagpirma ka lang naman. Yung mga agreement kasi usually, wala na yan siyang notarized ng isang lawyer. Okay? Hindi notarized. Yung mga employment contract, meron talagang um, notary from a lawyer. Kaya nagiging legal document siya. Yung agreement, parang supporting lang yan. Kunyari, nagutang yung kapitbahay niyo, tapos meron, kayong, meron kang sinulat sa papel. Diba? Pinirmahan niya. So that's like an agreement lang ba? Pero hindi siya ganun ka-powerful na maging legal document. Kung baga para lang siyang evidence lang, something like that. So, kung remote employee ka, iha-hire ka ng company na yon. But you are given the privilege to work at home. Kaya tinawag natin siyang remote employment. So, ibig sabihin kung remote employee ka, meron kayong mga Christmas party, ah, ganyan usually. Meron kang 13-month pay, maliban sa bonus mo, and so on. Okay? So kaya, if you are planning to be an independent contractor, malamang freelancer ka. Kasi na independent ka nga eh. Ikaw mismo ang nag-build ng sarili mo. O, parang ganyan. Okay? So that's why you need to properly identify kung saan ka ba dito sa dalawa in the future at kung saan yung mas gusto mo sa dalawa. Gusto mo bang maging online freelancer or maging remote employee kasi um, doon ka mas comfortable? Siyempre, lahat naman ng bagay, meron tayong tinatawag na pros and cons. Merong advantages 
at meron din namang disadvantages. Kunyari, ang mga online freelancers, ang advantage nila, pwede silang mag-cater ng maraming clients kasi hindi sila limited to only one. They can serve more than one client if they wish. Ang advantage naman sa mga remote employees, no, isa sa mga advantages niya, na-mention ko na, di ba, yung mga leave, mga government benefits, and so on. Ang mga online freelancers, alam niyo bang hindi secured ang ating job if you are working as a freelance provider? Hindi secured ang ating trabaho. Because anytime the client will leave you, iiwanan ka. Diba? Magtataka ka na lang na, bakit walang email sa akin ang client ngayon? Yun pala, bigla ka na lang iniwan sa ere. So technically, mawawalan ka ng source of income. Our jobs are not secured. Pero may mga cases naman na hindi ka iiwan. Pero may mga health issues. Kunyari, may client ka. Tapos yung client na yun, inatapi sa puso, namatay. So, wala ka na rin trabaho. Pero, if you are a remote employee, kung remote employee ka and you are working with a client, kapag nawala si client, alam nga naman sasabihin ng company, Piper, um, unfortunately, your client died yesterday. And because of that, we are going to fire you in the company. May ganung decision ba ang mga employers? Wala. Piper, namatay yung client mo kahapon. So, as of now, um, bibigyan, muna namin, bibigyan muna kita ng mga tasks related to the company while waiting na mahanapan ka namin ng panibagong client. So, ganun naman ang sa remote employment. Pag nawala ang client mo, hahanapan ka ng replacement. So, our job is actually secured. At marami pang kita. Lahat naman ng bagay na ginagawa natin, meron talagang pros and cons yan. Okay? So, that's why if you are planning to be an independent contractor or as an online freelancer, you need to build your brand in the digital landscape. Kung plano mong mag-digital marketing, i-offer ang digital marketing. So, dapat, ikaw mismo, alam mo kung paano mo i-build ang brand mo. Okay? So, eto yung five online stores. Gagawa tayo ngayon ng tindahan. To build your brand as a virtual professional. You need to create a store, tindahan, kasi magbibenta ka man. Diba? Consider your freelancing service as a business. Kasi magbibenta ka man sa client. Anong ibibenta mo sa client? Yung service mo. Diba? I am going to sell my email management skill. I am going to sell my Facebook management skill. So, kaya kung meron kang ibibenta, dapat meron kang store to promote your brand online. At isishare ko sa inyo ngayon yung limang online stores na dapat ninyong gawin in order for you to build your brand in the digital landscape and for you to become searchable in the digital arena. Ano yung una natin gagawin online store? Bagawa kayo ng online portfolio. Bagawin natin yan during your module number 10. Your online portfolio, ang purpose kasi niyan is for your search engine marketing to make your virtual assistant brand closer to the algorithm of the search engines kagaya ni Google. So that's why part of your campaign online is for you to create an online portfolio. 
um, gagawa tayo ng online portfolio. Um, kasi ang tawag natin dito, online store through a website. Pero hindi hindi paid website ang gagawin natin. Kasi may bayad yun, di ba? So kaya ang gagawin natin online portfolio is yung gagamitin natin yung mga free lang na mga service providers. Okay? Second, you are going to create your Facebook business page. So meron ka ng website, kailangan mong gumawa ng Facebook business page. For what reason? For what reason? Ang Facebook kasi, ang tawag din natin dyan, your second website. Or it's an alternative option sa website mo. You need to create a Facebook page. Ma'am, kung website lang ba, kulang ba? Well, kulang talaga siya. Kasi ang mga internet users, iba-iba yung mga platforms na ginagamit. Kung meron kang website, you are reaching the Google users. Kung meron kang Facebook page, you are reaching naman the Facebook users. Kaya dapat meron din kayong Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn to also reach those who are using those platforms. Ang Facebook business page mo, this will serve as your social media marketing. So you are going to promote your VA business by using a social media platform. And this will serve as your online store through Facebook. Okay? Through a Facebook page. Third, ang Facebook business page, gagawin natin yan sa module number module number 6 niyo. Okay? Huwag kayong mag-alala. Kasi lahat naman ng mga dinidiscuss ko, we will always guide you with that. So, para alam nyo kung ano at paano siya gagawin. Third, you are going to create your business blog as part of your content marketing. Your business blog will serve as your online store through narrative contents. Alam nyo kasi sa internet no, or even offline, merong dalawang klase ng contents. There are two types of contents. The first type of content is what we call narrative. Kaya, in order for you to build your brand in the internet, you also need to create a business blog for your VA business. Kasi ang tawag natin sa inyong business blog, it is your online store through narrative contents. The second type of content is what we call visual contents. And that will lead us to your fourth online store because you are also going to create your YouTube channel for the purpose of video marketing. Pero hindi tayo magbablog. You are going to use YouTube in order for you to create promotional videos, particularly your video resume. Kasi mas higher ang chance na magtitiwala ang client ninyo sa inyo if you are going to show to them your video resume. Kasi nakikita na kung sino yung nagsasalita sa video. So, mas madali na lang ma-establish yung trust to the point na magiging reputable ka sa mata at sa isipan nung nanonood ng video nyo. Your YouTube channel will serve as your online store through visual contents naman siya. Through visual contents. Pag sinabing visuals, it will not only refer to videos but also images. At yung pinakahuli nating gagawin, ay sorry, um, the business blog covered yan siya ng module number 4 while your YouTube channel is covered ng module number 8. 
Kaya tuturuan din naman namin kayo kung paano gagawin ang mga online stores na to. Yan kasi yung responsibility ko as your instructor. Yan yung responsibility ng Knights of Online Marketers to help you along the way. Um, siguro matatawag kaming coach. So far kasi hindi pa kami nagme-mentoring. Kung baga, kasi ang coaching, mentoring, although synonymous, pero magkaiba din yung ginagawa nila. Eh. Kasi yung mentor, even after the training program, diba, continuous pa rin yung relationship nila. Kami kasi sa dami ng mga natetrain namin, um, hindi lahat ng graduates namin talagang nakabuild kami ng relationship all throughout. Although yung iba naging family, naging close friends, pero not all. Because we are here as your instructor. We are not your teacher. Magkaiba din kasi yung teacher at saka yung instructor. Ang teacher, spoon feeding yon, Spoon feeding. Kaya nga, di ba, minsan sa elementary at sa high school, ang tawag natin sa kanila teacher. Pag sa college naman, professor. Di ba? Professor or instructor. Kasi pag sinabi instructor, they are just giving, from the word itself, they are just giving instruction. Parang nag-guide lang talaga sila. Hindi masyado spoon feeding. Kaya do not call me teacher. I am an instructor. Do not call me a mentor because what I am doing is coaching. Okay? So, yun yung mga brands na pinopromote ko. Ayan mo sa doing consultancy. Kasi guys, kung kukunin nyo ako as your mentor after the training program, meron din naman yung additional and corresponding um, um, fee kasi meron siyang halong consultancy. Okay? Pero pag may mga simple questions lang naman kayo, hindi naman ako selfish to answer that. That's why you can always reach to me. Kasi down to earth din naman din tayo eh. Panghuli, you are going to create your mailing list for the purpose of email marketing because this will serve as your online store through newsletters. So you are now going to promote your brand directly to the inbox of your subscribers. So, eto yung mga, tapos i-discuss natin yan sa module number 9. Oh, so, you see, yung mga stores na yan, dahan-dahan natin siyang i-build para magkaroon kayo ng presence online. As early as now, na nagtitraining pa kayo, you need to build already your foundation and introduce yourselves in the internet algorithm. Para the moment na you are already starting na magtrabaho sa isang client, um, okay na yung ano, okay na yung presence mo online. Okay? So, yan yung limang online stores that you need to build, or five online stores to build your brand as a virtual professional in the digital landscape. Kasi, mas gusto ko na maging independent contractor kayo. But of course, I am also going to give you insights sa module number 10, yung online freelancing sites, yung mga social media sites, gig economy sites, at saka yung RPO. Sa module number 10 na natin, mas i-discuss yan. So that's on the last module bago tayo mag-post training evaluation. Yung post training evaluation niyo kasama din diyan ang graduation. Kaya during that session, live natin gagawin 'yon. So live. And we are going to use a platform na pwede tayong mag-group picture sa ating digital classroom. Like for example, Google Meet. Kasi wala kaming paid subscription sa Zoom eh. Pati itong sa StreamYard na ginagamit ko ngayon. So, Google Meet naman, um, maganda rin naman siyang gamitin. So, on your last day, during your post-training evaluation and graduation, 
we are going to go live. Kaya I am going to remind you again um, na kung hindi pa kayo kasama sa ating official group chat, the first thing that you need to do is to send first a private message sa personal FB ko. So kailangan nyo munang mag-message sa akin. Kasi kung wala pa tayong previous conversation, kung wala tayong previous conversation, hindi ko kayo maa-add sa group chat. Okay? Kasi again, the group chat will serve as our as the platform for me to cater your questions. Siyempre, uh, meron din akong gagawing mga live session dito sa ating official Facebook group. So, kapag meron akong gustong i-share na mga additional inputs, magla-live naman ako sa ating Facebook group. Okay? So, maliban sa ating mga uploaded na learning sessions. So, yan yung mga kailangan nating tandaan in regards to your training program and as you build a strong foundation of your digital career. Kaya I hope na the moment na nag-enroll kayo sa aming skills development and enhancement program, naging ready na rin talaga kayo for some session na may nose bleeding and some sessions na talagang internal bleeding. Okay? Kaya um, you need to consider those that I mentioned earlier. Ang pinaka huli na i-share ko sa inyong um, insights dito sa inyong pre-training assessment na session, yung five investments that you need to invest, no? Five investments in building your digital career. Okay? So these are the five investments that you need to invest in order for you to build a strong foundation of your digital career. Kasi alam kong meron na kayong mga, meron na kayong mga narealize. Alam kong medyo na set na natin yung ating mind meron na tayong proper mindset about being a virtual professional. Kaya ang tanong, are you ready to be a virtual professional? Ready ka na bang maging isang virtual assistant or maging isang digital marketer? So dito natin ngayon malalaman sa five investments that you need to consider in building a strong foundation of your digital career. Checklist number one, you need to invest for the right technology. You visit my YouTube channel, yung Queen of the Nights, tapos panuorin ninyo doon yung isang episode namin sa, pag, sa pag-purchase at pag-unbox ko ng desktop computer. Ano ba yung kailangan mong processor at saka RAM para uh, maging basis mo siya in buying a desktop? So, pwede nyo panoorin yung episode ko na yon sa YouTube channel na Queen of the Knights. Yung Knights, yung letter K. Queen of the Knights, hindi letter N. Kasi yung Queen of the Night, si Whitney Houston yon. So, Queen of the Knights, kumbaga Queen of the Knights of Online Marketers. May, ano din kasi, may history din kasi kung bakit yan yung pangalan ng business namin. Kasi from the word Knights, diba? we are protecting a brand online. Kaya ang tawag ko sa mga agents ko dati, we are, uh, they are my knights of online marketers. Siyempre, kung merong knights, merong queen. Uh, kaya, queen of the knights. Kaya, minsan, some of my trainees are also calling me 
Queen P or Queen Piper. Pero alam nyo ba na some of my trainees verified na every time that they are listening to my voice, para daw nilang naririnig si Kal- Kalad Karen Davila. Or minsan, similar daw yung boses ko kay Karen Davila. Um, ako naman, every time that I am listening to my recorded voice, hindi ko naman talaga siya nare-recognize na parang si Kalad Karen. Siguro kasi palagi kong naririnig yung boses ko, no? But to those na naging student ko online, verified, yes ma'am, medyo similar na yung boses mo sa kanya. Pwede na siguro ako maging host ng dito lang yan, sa my puhunan. Diba? Mag-change career na rin tayo. Technology. So that's the first that you need to invest. Hindi lang naman computer. Kagaya nitong desktop na ginagamit ko ngayon, meron akong camera, meron akong ginamit na headset. So this is part of your investment. Hindi lang dapat computer. Kaya hindi ko nilagay dyan computer lang. Technology. In fact, even minsan, clients will require the use of mobile phone. Diba? Minsan may mga clients na naghahanap ng VA na may na may Apple gadgets kasi iOS ang operating system. So that's why if you are planning to be um, a successful provider of online services, then you need to invest for the right technology. I'm sure meron na kayo yan kasi nakakasali kayo sa mga training programs namin. Next is for you to invest sa as much as possible, the fastest connectivity. Well, actually, there's no such thing as fastest connectivity in the Philippines. No? Kasi lahat naman ng mga service, ng mga internet service providers or ISP, meron talaga yan silang mga palpak minsan. And I know na yung paparating na third major telephone company will also experience palpak in the future. Kasi there's no such thing as perfect business din naman. Pero as much as possible, invest on the right technology. Kung baga yung pinakamabilis, um, fiber optics as compared with those DSL. Baka yung iba sa inyo ginagamit pa is packet wifi or yung sinasaksak lang na router or baka yung iba ang ginagamit mobile hotspot sa kanilang cellphone na mobile data. Naranasan ko din naman yan. Naranasan kong magtrabaho sa internet cafe. Naranasan kong gumamit ng packet wifi. Okay? Naranasan ko rin mag, um, tawag dyan, gumamit nung sinasaksak lang na modem. Tapos naranasan ko rin mag mobile hotspot. Pero syempre ngayon, nag-invest na ako to the, to the point na kaya kong bayaran yung monthly subscription. So syempre, isisegway ko, I actually availed of the 100 Mbps na fiber plan ng PLDT. Although this is not a sponsored video, pero I will mention my ISP, PLDT. And I'm very fortunate and I'm very blessed na hindi kami nagkakaroon ng problem as of now. At sana naman hindi kami magkaroon ng problem, please. Kasi marami akong nababasa sa newsfeed ng aking mga friends about the palpak service of PLDT. Pero sana, 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 hindi ko talaga siya maranasan. Okay, so far, tumatak mo siya sa mga 90, minsan sumusobra pa nga ng 100 ang download speed. Mahal ang pinabayaran ko, 3,000 plus. Pero for me, hindi siya mab hindi siya mabigat na responsibility. Kasi gagamitin ko naman yung internet para kumita ng pera. So internet is my asset. Hindi siya liability. Kaya wag kayong magproblema. Ay, ay mahal man ang 3,000 ma'am. Wag dapat ganun ang mindset. Because this is your business. And as a business owner, you need to invest um, resources that will really help you become successful in your journey. 
Kaya kung bibili din kayo ng computer, dapat hindi yung tinitipid rin. Siyempre kung nagsisimula ka palang understandable. Pero kung may budget ka naman, bakit ka bibili ng second hand na hindi natin alam kung anong naging issue nun? Why not purchase a brand new? Kasi kung second hand yan or surplus, baka ikaw pa yung magkaroon ng problema in the future. Baka masasayang lang din yung in-invest mo. So it's up to you ha. I'm just sharing my independent insights here based on my experience for the past years of being in this kind of industry. Kasi lahat naman ng sinishare ko sa inyo, talagang naranasan ko. Lahat ng mga skills na ituturo ko sa inyo, naranasan ko talaga with my clients. Kaya um, I am comfortable sharing to you the insights that is included, that are included dito sa inyong learning module. Okay? Third, eto na yung in-invest ninyo ngayon. Yung pinatawag natin competency. Ayan. So, eto na yung in-invest ninyo. Since gusto ninyong mag-develop ng skills, gusto ninyong mag-enhance ng skills, so, dito na kayo nag-invest. So, congratulations on investing on your competency. Marami akong isi-share sa inyo. 20 days tayong magsasama. And I'm sure, <laughs> guys, meron tayong nasama sa recorded um, video natin. No? Pagpasensyahan nyo na yan. Um, yung nasa likod ko. Ayan. Hi. Say hi to them. O, magiging sikat ka na dito sa, sa recorded module ng ano ng ating mga trainees sa <laughs> ano um, sa Knights of Online Marketers. So her name is actually saan siya? Say hi. What's your name? Oh, sumagot naman siya. Tarshir ang kanyang name. So actually si Tarshir no yung nakikita niyo sa ating record ano one day bigla na lang siyang pumasok sa bahay namin. Uh, ang naging ano ko, conclusion, parang niligaw siya siguro ng, ng dating may-ari, baka kasi nanganak yung kanilang alagang pusa, tapos yung mga, mga kittens, baka niligaw, tapos napunta sa amin itong isa. Kaya, inalagaan na lang namin. Okay, so this is... Um, um, Tarshir is our fourth cat. Uh, mga stray cats yun. O, di ba nakapag-segue ako? And this video is talagang uh, makikita nyo na always dito si Tarshir. Okay, so competency. So congratulations on investing on your competencies. Okay? So 20 days tayong magsasama. I am going to share to you a lot of knowledge and skills competencies in order for you to be competent both in the local and international markets. Okay? So, kung tapos na yung um, competencies, the fourth one is yung toolkit naman natin. Okay? Yung toolkit. You need to prepare for your freelancer toolkit. So that's why part of your module number 10 is for you to prepare your toolkit like your resume, video resume, online portfolio, tapos yung global payment services accounts niyo. Anyway, tutulungan ko rin kayo dyan. And of course, yung client acquisition. Alam nyo, honestly speaking ha, Ang client acquisition ang medyo challenging sa limang investments na yan. Kasi madali lang namang bumili ng laptop eh, or ng desktop. May pera ka, makakabili ka. Madali lang din magpakonek ng internet kung may pera ka, pwedeng dalawang ISP. Competency, pag may pera ka, mag-enroll ka sa mga training programs. Yung toolkit, gagawa ka. Yung client acquisition ang medyo challenging kasi dyan na darating yung time na magkakaroon ka ng problem kung paano ka makakakuha ng clients. Mahirap makahanap ng clients, guys. Especially newbies. 
because the competition is getting tighter and tighter and tighter every day. Madadagdagan pa talaga ng population ninyo. That's why you need to create an edge. You need to create your competitive advantage as compared with the other virtual assistants or virtual professionals out there. Kaya nga in order for you to do that, I want you to be an independent contractor by creating your online stores, submit your profile sa mga recruitment process outsourcing um, companies, you create your profile sa mga gig economy and online freelancing sites as well as sa mga social media sites. Okay, so kaya if you really want na yung adventure ninyo in building your digital career is maging um, successful, so you really need to give focus. Okay? So yun yung lima. Yun yung limang checklist na kailangan yung i-consider. Your module number one, which is all about email management, is your second day. So tomorrow, mapapanood ninyo ang learning module natin for email management. At magsisimula na rin dyan, no? magsisimula na rin bukas ang ating learning discussion, ang ating um, demonstration at saka yung hands-on activities para makaperform na rin tayo ng mga required tasks na dapat ninyong matapos bago dumating ang module number 10. Kaya tanungin ninyo ang sarili nyo ngayon. Ano-ano na ba yung mga skills na meron na kayo na sa tingin, sa tingin ninyo pwede ninyong magamit as a VA? Meron ka na bang alam sa mga MS Office? Marunong ka bang mag-web research? Do you know how to do some lead generation? No? Data entry, data encoding. How about your communication skills? Kailangan mong i-practice din yan. Especially your English communication skills. Kasi kahit na back office tayo, no? back office, uh, it is also required that you are competent and proficient sa verbal and written English. Kung baga, it's part of the minimum requirements. You need to identify. Mag-identify na kayo ngayon pa lang para meron na rin tayong mailagay sa inyong resume the moment na makarating na tayo sa module na yan. Okay. So, kaya I'm very, very excited to share to all of you my independent insights, my personal experiences, my work-related activities, and business-related activities pagdating sa pagiging isang virtual professional. So, let's just get to know each other um, through our official group chat. And of course, sa gagawin natin, Facebook Live dito sa ating official Facebook group. Okay? So for now, um, I believe nakapag-share naman ako sa inyo ng mga inputs na pwede nating magamit um, to create a proper mindset kung paano talaga magsimulang mag-build ng inyong digital career. Sana meron tayong na-realize sa session na to that working as a virtual professional is not as easy as what you are thinking. Hindi siya ganun kadali. Okay? Kaya invest competencies para naman mas magkaroon ka ng edge, mas maging unique ka as compared with your competitors. So, if you have questions in regards to what I shared to you through this video, all you need to do is pwedeng magpadala kayo ng question sa ating group chat or you can ask your question by commenting it below. Kasi pag nabasa ko na yung comment ninyo, to the best that I can, 
I will answer and address your concern. So guys, sana magkaroon tayo ng relationship because you are now part of the KOM family. Malaki yung pasasalamat ko sa inyong lahat for joining our online training program. At sana, after your training program ng Skills Development and Enhancement Program, you will also avail of the other programs that we are offering. So I will just wait for your questions. I will just wait for your clarifications through our group chat and through the comment section of this uploaded video. So, maghanda kayo ha, kasi starting bukas, we are now going to teach you level of skills competencies. So, magsisimula na tayo bukas in learning the skills that you can actually sell to your future clients. So, for you to get updated with the activities of Knights of Online Marketers, I am inviting all of you once again to like our official Facebook page. Hanapin nyo lang po ang Facebook page ng Knights of Online Marketers. So all you need to do is just to search Knights of Online Marketers in Facebook. So kung sakaling nag-like na po kayo or nag-follow, maraming maraming salamat po. You can also join the official Facebook group natin. Hanapin nyo lang ang KOM Academy Online Job Training Provider. So aside from liking our Facebook page, I am also encouraging you to join the official Facebook group of KOM Ang pangalan niya sa Facebook is KOM Academy Online Job Training Provider. And of course, um, do not forget to subscribe sa aming YouTube channel. Ang pangalan is Queen of the Nights. We are uploading videos there, both entertainment so, may mga contents kami na entertaining to our subscribers. And there are also contents that are educational, especially to those Filipinos na gusto talagang i-build ang kanilang digital career, as well as sa mga businesses na plano nilang i-build ang kanilang brand online. So, I am inviting you again to like the official page of Knights of Online Marketers. Join the Facebook group of KOM Academy Online Job Training Provider and subscribe to the YouTube channel of Queen of the Knights. So, ayan. So, marami na akong na-share sa inyong pre-training assessment. You also need to assess yourselves. Ready na ba kayo para bukas? Ready na ba kayo mag-enhance at mag-develop ng inyong mga skills competencies? And I am hoping that your answer uh, is already yes, ma'am. Ready, ready na po kami. So that's it for this learning session. Maraming maraming salamat sa panonood at pakikinig from the beginning until the end if you want to um, to review this session you can always do that recorded naman ito so mean to say you can always watch this over and over and over again hanggang sa talagang maging familiar na kayo with the inputs that I shared to all of you so with that uh, I am now going to sign off for our first session. So, meron pa tayong 19 more session na magsasama. So, I'm now going to sign off and see you on the first um, SDEP module na i-discuss natin bukas. So, once again, 
This is um, Piper Rambuanga, your instructor, your resource speaker, your coach for your integrated, comprehensive, virtual assistant and digital marketing training program. So once again, welcome to the Knights of Online Marketers Digital Classroom. Goodbye, everyone. And see you on the next video.